Hi guys, so this week we're going to talk about the digestive system. So digestion is a process of breaking down food into smaller particles. So those particles are going to be used in absorption and absorption is going to take those chemicals and convert them into energy that we can use in order to fuel our bodies. So digestion starts to take place in the mouth. We have these enzymes in our saliva that just start to break down our foods um, before it gets to the stomach to make it easier to digest and it keeps on going from there. So the digestive system is a continuous tube from the mouth to the anus. So you have the mouth, uh, the pharynx, the esophagus, all the structures in the mouth, such as the teeth, the gums, the tongue, all of those are going to contribute to digestion as well. The esophagus is going to carry that food from the mouth to the stomach. The stomach will then carry the food to the small intestine and then to the large intestine. So we'll talk about the different um, parts of the small and large intestine and also the accessory organs of the digestive system such as the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, which are going to help us uh, break down food even further. So the digestive system, its job is to ingest and break down that food, absorb those nutrients, and also eliminate any waste products that we have. So I talked about the pathway of food. It's going to start in the mouth, go to the pharynx or the back of our throat, to the esophagus, which is going to carry the food from the mouth to the stomach. The stomach will then carry food to the small intestine the first part of which is the duodenum. The duodenum will then carry food to the jejunum and then to the ileum. So the ileum is going to be the last part of the small intestine and then it will enter the cecum which is going to be part of the large intestine. And then the, the bolus or the food is going to travel up the ascending colon across the transverse colon down the descending colon through the sigmoid colon which is S-shaped which is why it's called sigmoid and down the rectum, which means straight. So it's a straight tube that goes down, and it exits via the anus. Some of our accessory organs are the liver and the gallbladder. They're very important in breaking down fats in our body. So the liver is what's going to make bile, or bile salts, and the gallbladder stores those bile, that bile for the liver. So once it makes the liver, or once it makes the, the bile, it will transport the bile into the duodenum where it will be used to break down fat at the small intestine level. The pancreas sits a little posterior to the stomach and it's going to be controlling our blood sugar so that as we're going through um, our eating process, you know, our blood sugar is always controlled. It also makes a great deal of our digestive enzymes, so it will also help break down a lot of our proteins, a lot of our fats, and a lot of our carbohydrates. So let's talk about some word parts. Abdomino and lapro are both going to meet abdomen or abdominal cavity. So think of the word lap laparoscopy or laparoscopic. Um, that's going to be when they use a tool uh, in a scope to go into the abdomen to look around. Um, oftentimes some surgeries will be laparoscopic so that they make less incisions or less, um, less big incisions in the body. Ano is going to refer to the anus. Appendo and appendico are going to refer to the appendix. Coli is going to refer to gall or bile. Um, so with gall, it's talking about the gallbladder. Um, so cholecystitis, cyst means bladder, so choli, cyst is gallbladder, and itis would be inflammation. So inflammation of the gallbladder would be cholecystitis. Colo or colono is going to refer to the colon, which is another word for the large intestine. So don't mix that up with the small intestine. Duodeno will refer to the duodenum, which is part of the small intestine. Entero will deal with the small intestine. So colo or colono is large intestine. Entero is small intestine. So that'll make a big difference when you're think, looking at things like procedure names so that you know if they're talking about the small intestine or the large intestine. Esophago will refer to the esophagus. 
Gastro will refer to the stomach. So gastritis would be an inflammation of the stomach. Gingivo is the gums. So gingivitis is inflammation of the gums. Glosso or linguo is going to be tongue. Hepato is liver. So hepatitis is inflammation of the liver. Ilio is going to refer to the ileum, that last part of the small intestine. Pay attention to spelling here because if it were spelled with an I rather than an E, it would be referring to the hip bone, that ileum. Jejuna will refer to the jejunum. Oro will refer to the mouth. Pancreato will refer to the pancreas. Pepso to the digestion. So think of when you take Pepto or Pepsid, those are all drugs for helping with indigestion. So think Pepso, digestion. Dyspepsia would be difficulty with digestion or another word for indigestion. Phago refers to swallowing or eating, so dysphagia, spelled with a G, is going to be difficulty swallowing. Or hyperphagia is increased eating or increased appetite. Proct or recto is referring to the rectum, so proctologist will refer to somebody who's a specialist uh, or a doctor that deals with the rectum. Sigmoido will refer to the sigmoid colon. And alga will refer to pain. So some medical terms that deal with those word parts. Anal will refer to the anus. Aphasia is no swallowing. Appendicitis is going to be inflammation of the appendix. Cholecystitis will be inflammation of the gall bladder. Cholelithiasis, so this is a little bit different. We haven't done lithiasis yet, but lithiasis means a condition that has to deal with stones. So this would be gallstones. Later on, we'll get to kidney stones, and that would be nephrolithiasis. So lithiasis is always going to mean stones. Colitis is going to be inflammation of the large intestine. Duodenal will refer to the duodenum. Dysentery is difficulty or painful condition dealing with the small intestine. Dyspepsia is indigestion. Dysphagia is difficult swallowing. And esophageal is referring to the esophagus. So appendicitis is going to be an inflammation of the appendix. Remember that the appendix is a lymphoid or immune structure that hangs off of the cecum. So when it gets inflamed, it's usually because of a fecolith or a stone made from feces um, that is not passed through the intestines. It will get lodged in there and gather a lot of bacteria, which will inflame the appendix and will need to be removed um, because if the tissue explodes, that can lead to sepsis, um, which is going to be an inflammation or an infection of the blood due to all of the fecal matter that would then be free floating in the abdomen. Cholelithiasis, like I said, has to do with stones in the gallbladder. So you can see all these gallstones sitting in our gallbladder. And sometimes inflammation of the gallbladder will happen if these gallstones get lodged in the cystic duct. So in that case, the gallbladder would likely have to be removed, or you would have to get treatment for these gallstones to have them broken up. Esophagitis is going to be inflammation of the esophagus. Gastric is referring to the stomach. Gastritis is inflammation of the stomach. Gastroenteritis is going to be inflammation of the stomach and small intestine. Gastroenterologist is going to be a specialist of the stomach and small intestines. Gastroenterology is the specialty of the small intestine and stomach. Gastroesophageal is referring to the stomach and small intestine. Gingivalgia is going to be pain in the gums. Gingivitis is inflammation of the gums. And glossitis is inflammation of the tongue. Hepatitis is going to be inflammation of the liver. Hepatoma is going to be a tumor of the liver, so oma meaning tumor. Hepatomegaly is going to be 
an increase in size of the liver. Oral is referring to the mouth. Pancreatic is referring to the pancreas. Pancreatitis is inflammation of the pancreas. Rectal is referring to the rectum. Rectocele is a herniation of the rectum. Seal means herniation. Sublingual is sub means below. And lingua means tongue. So this is referring to below the tongue. So some medications are sublingual. Specifically ones that treat heart attacks. Colonoscopy will be a procedure in which you use a scope to look at the large intestine. A CT colonography is going to be a CAT scan that involves looking at the large intestine. Esophagogastroduodenoscopy, say that 10 times fast, is going to be a procedure of looking at the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. So this is usually shortened to EGD for obvious reasons. Gastroscope is going to be the instrument used to look at the stomach. Gastroscopy would be a procedure in which you used a gastroscope to look at the stomach. A laparoscope is the tool used to look at the abdomen. Lapros laparoscopic, oh my goodness, laparoscopic is pertaining to the procedure to look at the stomach with a laparoscope. And laparoscopy is the procedure where you use a laparoscope to look at the stomach. So during a colonoscopy, they're going to use one of those scopes and they're going to insert it into the rectum to look at the large intestine. So if they find anything during the colonoscopies, like a polyp, they can remove it with the tools within that scope. So that scope has a lot of cool features. Um, it has cauterization features. It has these little hooks that you can use um, to pull things off. And uh, there's also biopsy features. There's also a little camera inserted into there, so you can see as you're going, you can also take still photos for later. So what they're showing here is gastroscopy or gastroscope. So they're actually doing that EGD procedure where they're going to look at um, the esophagus, the stomach, and they'll likely go straight into the duodenum from there. So in both the colonoscopy and the gastroscopy, the patient is mostly sedated. Um, not under heavy sedation, but they're, they're unconscious for this. So again, same kind of scope is used, so the doctor will be able to see what they're, how, where they're going as they are tracking through the esophagus and the stomach, and they can cauterize or um, grab anything that they need to while they're in there. There's another picture of one. So a proctoscope is going to be an instrument used to look at the rectum. Proctoscopy is going to be the procedure of looking at the rectum with a proctoscope. Sigmoidoscopy is going to be a procedure used to look at the sigmoid colon specifically. They might do this in cases of diverticulitis. Some more words. Abdominocentesis, a removal of fluid from the abdomen. Appendectomy is the removal of the appendix. Cholecystectomy is a removal of the gallbladder. Colectomy is a removal of part of the colon. Colostomy is a procedure of forming a new hole in the large intestine, usually to put in a colostomy bag uh, to drain feces into an external source. Gastrectomy is removal of part of the stomach. Gastrostomy is a, an insertion of a new hole into the stomach, usually to put in a tube for feeding. Ileostomy is a new hole put into the ileum, again, same reason. Jejunostomy, a new hole into the jejunum. And laparotomy is an incision into the abdomen. 
Abdominal ultrasonography is just using an ultrasound to look at the abdomen. Bariatric surgery is usually used in obese patients. Um, sometimes to in, a, in an effort to um, slow down their obesity. A barium enema is where they inject fluid into the rectum um, for specific procedures. Constipation is when the stool is not moving through uh, the small and large intestine quickly enough, so a lot of water gets reabsorbed. Crohn's disease um, is an inflammatory disease of the small and large intestines. Diarrhea is when stool moves too quickly through the small and large intestines, generally where water is not able to be absorbed as quickly. And endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, again, say that 10 times fast, that is usually abbreviated ERCP. It's a procedure where you look within with a scope. Retrograde means behind. Cholangio is referring specifically to the bile ducts, and pancrea pancreato is to the pancreas. And graphy is a procedure to measure or look at something. So we're using a scope to look within the bile ducts and the pancreas. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, also known as heartburn, or um, heartburn is usually a symptom of this, but people often say they have heartburn when they have GERD. Um, hemorrhoids are going to be an inflammation of the veins within the rectum, leading to bleeding and inflammation. A hernia is where typically intestinal tissue protrudes through the inguinal uh, ligament in the lower abdomen, usually from straining um, or lifting something heavy. Irritable bowel syndrome is also known as IBS. Peptic ulcers are going to be in the lower part of the stomach. They can be due to stress or different foods that people eat that are too acidic. Polyps are growths that happen pretty often. Um, they can be benign or malignant, so they can be either cancerous or not. Um, generally, they will remove polyps if they see them because they can be an obstruction during digestion uh, for the bolus to get through the stomach and into the intestines and further on. Ulcerative colitis is pretty similar to Crohn's disease. There generally tends to be more bleeding with ulcerative colitis, and this is usually associated with the descending colon, sigmoid colon, and rectum, whereas Crohn's disease is more ascending colon and transverse colon. But they do tend to blend together somewhat in symptoms. And an upper GI series is a series of procedures that can be done generally by um, a gastroenterologist. So BE is barium enema. EGD is the procedure that we talked about before. IBS is irritable bowel syndrome. And UC is ulcerative colitis. ERCP is the lung procedure we also listed before. Upper GI series. And gastroesophageal reflux disease. So let me know if you have any questions, send me an email, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.